sharing our stories connects us. Listen and be connected. Join us for the conversation meeting weekly at the intersection of community and culture. Hosted by Mario Nunez and Joe King Carter. Good morning, Tampa and Tampa Bay, the, t- the Tampa Bay area. This is Wednesday. It's your noon edition of The Conversation. Boy, we got a lot to talk about this morning. I'm your host, Mario Nunez. I'm seated alongside, as I am each and every week, by my able partner, Joe King Carter. There he is. Joe and King- let me say, Go ahead. since you said good morning, Dale. I'll say good afternoon. All right, all right. But, well, you know, because some people were up late last night because there was a kind of a special event that we were all tuned into, those of us that are politically active and, and socially conscious. And, and, Joey, did you get a chance to watch that? Oh, of course. Yeah, I think there, I think the, um, uh, the various polling uh, agencies said it was a very highly watched event. And for those that are uh, uh, kind of attuned to maritime vernacular, uh, there's one that a good sailor uh, will always uh, uh, salute, uh, and that is to say we have wind at our back, right? We have wind in our sails. Is that is that an apt uh, description of yesterday's events? I, th- I, think, uh, I think much was revealed during that uh, debate that was good for people who want to see a change uh, from... Uh, the Republicans who were involved. So I think it's a good thing. Uh, who are we kidding, Joe? She ate his lunch. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> it wasn't even close. <laughs> I mean, I said it last night when we were driving home. I said, you know, I, I, I think she pitched the shutout. It may not have been a perfect game, but it was a shutout. You know, no runs, no errors, and all that good stuff. So here right. we go. Right. I'm just trying to say that... Um, we are we are here on Wednesday each and every Wednesday. Last week we had the opportunity to uh, almost almost make our goal, Joey. What are we doing? What did we do last week? We well we got very very close, but we just fundraising our, fundraising. We did our fundraising for WMNF uh, dot org, and uh, uh, it was uh, a good time had by all. Yes, and the community pitched in and did their work. And thank you so much. For everyone out there who gives to WMNF, because we are uh, reliant upon you, uh, the listener, to support us. And so uh, it was good. But we here at the conversation fell very slightly short. We are a baby show. Baby show. Baby steps. And this was our first fundraiser. And I think we did very well considering. But uh, we're a little short. So if you have some pocket change out there, folks. Look at the couch. Please, right now we are at a place where... The smallest of donations, as always, will make a big difference for us. So if you got $5 or $10, uh, send it to us. Go online. Go to our tip jar. Designate the conversation. And uh, give us a little dough. We need it. WMNF.org. And you can find your way to our show right there. So let me say at the top, uh, there were some uh, funders. Some some fun. Uh, ra- we were doing some great fundraising last week. Joey. Yeah. You know, we, we were, Sean Canan came in here and he pitched for us. With his dulcet tones. Absolutely. And then Randy Zimmerman came in, our GM, and she's incredible. Very kind. She came in and she she did everything she could to get us over the hump. But she did. I do want to say a big shout out to, uh, and these are the donors that came through last week, Tito with his $50 pledge, Tanley with her $50 pledge, Phil and Carmen, Circle of Life, Circle of Life, is that right? Is that what we're calling it? Circle of Life? Circle of Friends. Circle of Friends. It's Circle of Friends, but it's, it's an important of part life, of our too. life. Yeah. yeah, Circle of Friends. It gives life. Phil and Carmen Nunez, thank you so much. Pete Otero, $11. Uh, Circle of Friends as well each and every month. Barbara Diaz-Jaskowski, thank you, Barbara, for your $50 donation. Uh, we got twenty-seven ten from Rhonda, and she was quick to point out, look, I gave twenty-seven ten because I didn't want WMNF to have to pick up the $2.10 charge for me having to give you my card. So that was incredibly generous. <laughs> uh, when when uh, Sean came in here to pitch... The uh, the uh, rechargeable uh, te- uh, television or radio is what it was. The rechargeable radio. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. He came he came in and pitched it so hard that Keith donated one hundred and eighty eight dollars, one hundred eighty nine dollars for the first time he says he's ever donated to WMNF. So Keith, we are eternally grateful. And of course, a colleague of yours, Phil, came in with one hundred dollars late last week. That's so, correct. I mean, here we are. And you know, by the way, I would uh, Phil and uh, several of those people were first timers. Keith, Phil. Uh, Pete Otero, uh, first time donations, and that uh, that's a, an accomplishment. So if you're asking what is it that we need to get us over the top, to get us there, I'm going to tell you right now, it's really, it's just real simple. $16 a month, 
on Circle of Friends, which is the easiest way to do this. It just comes out of your uh, your che- checking account. It comes out of your, uh, it, it gets charged to your credit card each and every month. $16 a month for a year will get us to our goals. So here we go. Somebody before the end of the show is going to come through with that. I have a strong feeling. Please and thank you. Thank you, sir. So, um, gosh, we, we have so much to talk about. Um, also, uh, today is, uh, is 9-11, Joe. We, we've got to bow our heads and, and, and talk seriously for just a minute because yes. this is a kind of a heavy day in our history. 23 years ago today. Do you remember where you were? Oh, I, <laughs> uh, I'm, I, it seems inappropriate to laugh. Yeah, I was, I was about to board uh, for only the second time in my life an airplane. I was taking a flight from Tampa to, uh, to Lexington, Kentucky. And um, I was preparing by buying film in a Kodak store when I'm watching the TV. The uh, individuals on the floor saw the Challenger blow up. No, it wasn't the Challenger. This was 9-11. This was the Oh, 9-11. The I'm sorry. Yeah, this was 9-11. The, yes. Uh, well, where were you for 9-11? I think, I think for the Challenger, that was, that was many years pre. That was in the 90s. So that's oh, why was, you were going to Lexington. I don't know why I was thinking of the Challenger. Well, why was it? Because, because it's a similar event. It feels the same, doesn't it? It feels it was, horrifically shocking. Yeah, I remember yeah. where I was when the Challenger blew up as I'm well. I'm sorry. I thought you asked me about the Challenger. 9-11. What was I thinking? 9-11. Uh, Yes, nine eleven. I remember very well, and and uh, it was just another normal day for me. I uh, had the day off. I woke up. And I turned on the TV, like everybody else, and, like everybody else, and I saw this happening before my eyes, and I couldn't believe it. And yeah. I think that's the way so many it, people felt. It, it defied logic, and for me, it was a very personal day because, as a lot of my friends will know, and a lot of people who listen to the conversation know, I spent thirty years as an American Airlines flight attendant, and of course, the uh, first casualties of the day we should never ever forget this the very first people that that were uh, assaulted and killed on the day were the flight attendants on board those aircrafts because they had to be disabled first before they could bust into the cockpit and disable Correct. and disable the pilot so Correct. Uh, the first people that were actually casualties of the day were the flight attendants and it was just horrific we'll never forget it and and we should Always remember. And where were you on that day? I, I was supposed to be in Santiago de Chile. My crew was in Santiago uh, on lockdown for six days uh, because nothing was moving in that period of time. I had the fortune to be to have traded my trip, right? So somebody else took my trip, and 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 I was I was right. at home. I had just finished cutting the grass. I came inside. I turned on the television in time to see the first airplane Unbelievable. go into the tower. So yes. the second airplane, forgive me, because the first one, we didn't have that. It's on so the... interesting that I confused those two events when you asked me, because those, it happens. Two, those two events have to do with, you know, uh, airplanes, and but they just are so powerfully disturbing and traumatizing to the mind to see... Uh, to see death right in front of you, and yet some people deal with it all the time, so... So we remember those that we lost that day, uh, professional colleagues that uh, of mine, members of my airline family, and as well everybody. And then, of course, the commemorations are going on uh, presently in New York. So with with uh, love, admiration, respect for the first responders and everybody that's been profoundly affected by nine eleven. Yes, Joey. So uh, and you know our our guest today in studio. Yes, is a fellow is a fellow that most people who listen to WMNF on the reg, as they say, as the kids say, would probably know this cat. Well, we do a thing here called "It's a Family Affair." What's that called again? It's a family affair. Oh, let's talk about that. It's a family affair. So why do we call it that, Joe? Well, we call that because we call it that because what we want to do here and there is, uh, in we, as we delve into narratives, personal stories about people, 
uh, throughout the community, we thought it might be nice to uh, introduce some of the people who uh, work for, are paid staff for, are volunteers for, uh, are donators to, and everyone who comes together to make uh, WMNF uh dot org what it is today a great big family uh the best little radio station on earth so uh we have someone who is a uh who is a regular yes sir uh, uh, on-air personality here yes sir and i am going to introduce him in such a way that i believe that i will meet, still keep him a hidden secret yeah <laughs> you're just gonna protect his identity like i'm that? gonna protect his identity because uh uh, we have with us today a gentleman named Greg Bowers. There we go, Greg yeah, Bowers. Yeah, Greg Bowers. And I now... <laughs> and everybody's out, scratching their heads, right? Everybody's they're out there saying, well, in, who is yeah, that? Yeah, they're in radio land going, mm-hmm. well, who's Greg Bowers? Well, who is Greg Bowers? Man. Well, I'll I tell you what, who Greg Bowers is. He's the guy that came up with a creative handle, DJ Spaceship. There it is. <laughs> Welcome, Spaceship. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Spaceship. It's great to have you in studio with us, my brother. Yes, yeah. yes. Fellow Jefferson Dragon, we just get that out of the way right now. Alumni. Front. Big big dragon hugs every time we see each other. Because <laughs> once a dragon, always a dragon. Let's That's go. Right. Let's go. Never leave. Go blue. So I got to tell you that when, uh, in the course of listening, as I have for, uh, wow, um, um, most of the lifetime of WMNF, I've listened to it. And, uh, Every, about, every now and then, somebody comes up with a handle, like Flea. Right. Uh, Flea gets to move through the community without people knowing his real name. I like that. And, uh, you know, uh, I, think that's, I think that Steve the Hitman is actually Steve the Hitman. Yeah, I don't that's think his that middle anybody, name. I, I think the if Hitman. I met him, I wouldn't call him Steve. I'd say, hey, Steve Hitman. the Hitman. And uh, so when I first heard DJ Spaceship, I said, wow, that's a cool name to have. So where did that name come from? You know, it's, it's kind of interesting that you asked me that question over the years of, you know, just having that name. Not many people ask me that question. Um, that goes along with uh, the question of why I wear the hats that I wear. Um, but the name DJ Spaceship, I'm a huge Outkast fan. Uh-huh. Um, Big Boy Andre. And mm-hmm. my first DJ name was, uh, yeah, it was pretty long. It was DJ Lucius Left Foot 3000. <laughs> So try putting that on Can't a business card. Can't put that card. on a bumper sticker. Bumper sticker, business card, it's even a T-shirt to take a deep breath when you try to put it in the press. Um, so when I went to a wedding of a friend of mine's, and I, you know, at the time I wasn't always this, you know, beautiful and bald, but you know, I'm still beautiful uh-huh. and bald. Yeah. And um, I had long hair, and there was a. One of the, the friends of the groom, he was like, no, that's too much to say. He's from New York. You know, the New Yorkers, they have that way of cutting you short. Right. And he was like, nah, you remind me of one of those dudes from Outcast. I'm going to call you Spaceship. And it stuck from there. Wow. And, and it's been Spaceship ever since then. So someone else gave you the name. Someone else gave me the name Spaceship. And, and roll with it. Yeah. I roll with it. Just and, keep it going. And by the way, that's interesting because I one time was with a friend who said, uh, I said, you know, I, I don't have a nickname. And uh, I was in a conversation with a friend. He, say, he said, well, what nickname would you have if you had a nickname? And I said, well, I'd like to be known as Joe the Brain. Yeah, Bobby uh-huh. the Brain. And he said... Bobby the Brain he And this is what he said. That's why you don't get to pick your own nickname. <laughs> <laughs> so it is true that most nicknames, I bet you, do come from, from some other people. Else, right? Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kinda like, uh, like in sports. You know, you, you, you don't really hear too many great players call themselves great. It's the people right. that give that to them. Right. So, I mean, some people do, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. at any rate, I like it. And you are uh, forever known to me. As Spaceship. And that's just how I refer to Appreciate you. Appreciate so. that. So let's take it from the top, Spaceship. All right. You know, we like to go all the way back to the beginning time. So born here in Tampa, Tampa native from from day one. Where'd you go to elementary school, junior high and high school? Um, Born and raised in Tampa, West Tampa to be exact. There you Um, go. Elementary school. You know, I've lived all over Tampa, but West Tampa is. And always in the city limits, right? Spaceship? Yes. Always. Yes. It wasn't outside. No county stuff for you. you. Nothing nothing against, you know, the city, parts of the city with different names, but actually in the city limits of Tampa. Born at Tampa General Hospital. Um, I went to Anderson Elementary. I uh, went to Booker T. Washington uh, and, you know, went to Jefferson High School, you Dragons. know, number one, you know, I mean, nothing against everybody else, but it's just dragons or die. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it's that pride. It's that pride, yeah. you know, and, and, and we feel it. We, those of us that have been here a length of time, if you went to King, you're probably a lion. You probably are proud of the fact that you grew up in and around Temple Terrace. Yeah. You know, South Southsiders. Robinson. I mean, real Southsider Robinson. Yeah. And then that little that little area. That, yeah. That little area there that's that's got Davis Island Incorporated, you know, then and, and, and of course, the Colbert and all that stuff. Beach Park. Right. There's plant. And so you just carry that with you. It's a source of pride. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's definitely pride. But before we get too dragonized. Oh, 
what the, let's talk. Careful. That's easy to do. Let's yeah. talk a little bit we'll, about. We'll bring uh, him in one day. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the the family situation, how you grew up, a little, whatever you feel comfortable. What you want to share with siblings? Okay. Um, yeah. So um, you know, my mom. I'm I'm two or five. There's five of us. Um, like I said, you know, I grew up in West Tampa and actually grew up in Central Park as well, downtown, mm -hmm. um, Perry Harvey Park area. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, football, you know, sports was my thing. I, I did anything that I could to escape the, the the activities, things that were going on in the neighborhoods that I grew up. So I played football, I played baseball, basketball, track and field, cross country, badminton, tennis. ROT. If there was a ball, you were chasing it. I'm, uh, yeah, if yeah. If there was a ball involved, you were chasing Listen, it. Listen, the only sport I think I didn't cover was golf and volleyball. You know, mm -hmm. but you know, I I just was a sports head, and well, and that shows music. you have a good taste, probably. But yes, go ahead. Yes, but you know, just a love of music and things like that. I have a very diverse taste in music, and uh, Marvin Gaye is my favorite artist of all time. Uh -huh. In which I recently was able to go to Detroit to Motown, uh, Mo Hitsville, USA, and, yes. and stand in the same studio that he recorded. Um, Let's go know, what's going on and the bongos that they played mm -hmm. on was still in the studios, and so wow. it was it was a good it was a good vibe, man. Wow. Good times. And and so you're in that family situation and you're knocking around through Central Park and you're going to school and along the way, uh, did you ever make a commitment to wherever your life was going to go or did you sort of let life take you to where you went? You know, I kind of grabbed the bull by the horns. I didn't have an exact, um, I, I take that back. I actually wanted to play football. I was, um, I'm a huge Deion Sanders fan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, him being a Florida boy, me being a Florida boy, you know, I was like, I wanted to follow his footsteps. He mm -hmm. went to Florida State. I wanted to go to Florida State. He played for the Atlanta Falcons. I wanted to go to the Atlanta Falcons and, and put my, you know, Put my my stats and everything. Now he ran like a four four, and, and of course you wanted to run a four four too. I ran a four three nine. There you go. There I ran you a go. four three <laughs> nine. So um, Joe, you might have to explain that to Joe because I'm not, I'm sure he understands what that is. But, oh yeah, of course I know. <laughs> but yeah. but, but Dion can move now. Yeah, Dion you know, can fly. Yeah, it is, to break it down to you, prime time. Can that's move. that's pretty quick. Right. Yeah. You know, right. I just I wasn't that tall, but I was you know pretty quick, able to take a hit and give a hit as far as on football and. And, you know, I, I always had a good time with Speed it. Speed kills. Yeah, but then the car accident changed that. You know, I wasn't paralyzed, but had a, it put a crack in my hip, so it put a crack in that plan, and I had to pivot a different direction. And, you know, music has always been there. And So when did we crack our hip, and how did that happen? So how it happened, what had happened was... <laughs> <laughs> um, that happened when uh, it was my senior year of high school, as a matter mm. of fact. I had wow. scholarships to go to a lot of different colleges and stuff like that. And um, me and two of my buddies, we were going over to Clearwater Beach. It was spring break, mm -hmm. and uh, we weren't paying attention, man. And I, I had my seatbelt on, but it was one of those old cars that when you slam on the brakes, eventually the seatbelt pulls you in. Right. But by then, it pulled me in. My, my knee hit the dashboard a certain way, and it pushed my hip, and it put a crack there. But I wow. didn't feel it. You know, it's, I was young, you know, invincible. Sure. It can't break me. But Of course. Now that I've gotten up to this big age that I'm at now, you know, <laughs> uh, I've learned the definition of, yeah, that hurts. So you discovered you had a crack tip. You went to the, I mean, get, walk me through that a little bit more. You went to the hospital. What happened? I mean, so how I discovered the crack in the hip was I did go to the hospital because mm -hmm. you know I was feeling pain and I kept feeling like a pop sensation. Ah. And then I went. It was like, yeah, it looks like uh, you you have some damage going on there. And by the time they came back with the results from that. Um, you know, the insurance wasn't all that back then. Right. Um, I went and I did a campus visit for a college whom name I won't say. And, mm -hmm. you know, doing the physical and the walkthrough and all that, they showed me my x-rays and said, they discovered it. This is a crack. Yeah. So, uh -huh. you know, my scholarship changed from full ride down to two years. And, uh -huh. you know, we didn't have that kind of money to, you know, pay for that university's tuition per year. Right. So I had to pivot. So the crack essentially prevented you from pursuing any kind of career in sports that you might have wanted to do on a professional level, yes, yes. Um, I still went out and compete. You know, I still went out and played and had a you know had a good time with it. But as far as like trying to go to the collegiate level to go pro, I had that I had to hang those shoes up. Okay, yeah. So now, now we're he's, cracked. he's in his early twenties. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. in his early twenties. Now we're cracked, and what are we going to do next? What happens? Um, you know, from that point, you know, I looked at the military. Um, it's, it's interesting, you know, um, today is 9-11. Uh, so I was looking to actually go into the Marines. And two of my cousins, they're Marines. And there's no such thing as a former Marine. Once a Marine. It's like a dragon. Once a dragon, right. always a dragon. Semper Fi. Right. Yeah. Forever loyal. Um, so, you know, I was, I was looking at going to the Marines and then 9-11 happened. And then, you know, I kind of went a different way from there as well. I didn't run from it. The, uh... The unit that I was going with, they got held back and then, you know, just sitting back doing some other things. And I wanted to stay and 
be present, like in the present with my, my younger siblings to make sure that they graduated high school, stayed out of trouble and the pitfalls that comes by living in the inner city. Mm-hmm, so. Mm-hmm. so you committed to family and to help your family along with the fact that you were... You had this uh, crack, and uh, you, so now you're not in the Marines. What happens next? So, you know, I would go to, like, the workouts and stuff. Um, shout out to Staff Sergeant Boggs. He was, uh, he's actually Wade Boggs' nephew. Really? Yes, and uh, he was the one recruiting me to come in. Um, so, you know, staying and dedicated to the family. You know, I just made sure, you know, I kind of turned to dad. You know, I would right. do things like, you know, making sure the homework was done, making right. sure to you keep them away from things. You're the oldest. Day. I'm the second oldest. Okay. I have a sister that's older than me. I'm two or five. Okay. Two or five. But you were on the scene at that time. Oh, yeah. I was on the scene. And then uh, and then eventually what happened, I took a trip up to North Carolina, Jacksonville, North Carolina, to mm-hmm. be exact, which is Camp Lejeune, which is a Marine base. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I sat back and was like, well, Dag, I'm here, but I'm not in the Marines. But I did a lot of the things that they did and still make sure to stay connected with my family back here in Tampa, mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, we didn't have Facebook and Instagram and social media. Mm-hmm. You know, the Internet not was yet. it was a step above what the CDs, the AOL CDs and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so what happened up there? Then what? where where do we go next? Uh from North Carolina. You Have know, you figured out what I'm going to ask you here? This is the, this <laughs> where, is the way where, it's going to work. Where did WMNF come into your life? I think I'm jumping ahead of the script a little bit. <laughs> oh, so you want to see when that happened? Well, uh, you know, let's... What let's, led you to us? We're just... Uh, we're what led to, you to become one of our family? We're getting to know Spaceship. That's okay, yes. so from North Carolina, you know, I just got a chance to meet different people, you know, up in New York, the tri-state area, and people that are west of the Mississippi, stuff like that, and get experience by being around different cultures instead of just... You know, because in Tampa, it's, it's a huge Latin community, you know, black and brown. You know, it's, it's, right. in my high school, it's, it's Latino and it's black, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, that's that's what it is. Pretty so, true. Pretty yeah, true. That's how I have the little broken Spanish that I have. Mm-hmm. And then when I say a little bit, people go too far. I'm like, up. Oh, that's all I got. <laughs> my, my Spanish is not good looking. <laughs> so, it's not very good looking. <laughs> yeah. Celia Cruz. Cruz. Yeah. yeah right. So I moved up to to, uh, to New York after North Carolina, and I spent two years up there, and I went to the Puerto Rican Day Parade, and got to know a lot of different people and stuff. And then I kind of noticed that the stronghold I had with helping my younger siblings to graduate started to become weak. So I returned back down south, and I've been here ever since then, you know, making sure that. So I was successful getting two of three to graduate. So I'll take that. It's good. That's good. Two that. out of three. That's a win. That's, That's good, a high man. success rate right there. Yes, yeah, it is. Absolutely. Good. That'll get yeah. you to the Hall yeah, of Fame. You should be, you yeah. should be proud, certainly. Oh, yeah. and, and while you were up there and expanding, you know, your horizons and, and learning a little bit more about our humanity as people, right. you also learned a little geography, you know, because it, it, people don't realize, but if you kind of tend to stay in one geographic region for your whole life, yeah. be it the Northeast, Northwest, Southwest, Deep South. Right. You don't realize that, you know, there's a, a whole, whole new big, world. There's a whole big yeah, world out there, man. Whole, and I definitely learned that, you know, like, because, I mean, going to New York, anybody that has been in New York knows, you know, you can go in this part, and it seems like Little Italy. Then you can go in here, it seems like Puerto Rico. Chinatown. Chinatown, mm-hmm. Dominican mm-hmm. Republic, and then it's just the Jewish community. So it's so many different. Absolutely. And you have that one space they all come to. It's called the Diamond District and Fifth Ave and Times Square. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Down on Canal Street, and yes, that, and that beautiful Central Park too, which is a big green patch in a in a in a, in a concrete jungle. There's, you know, when you're flying over it, you, you really see it. See it. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. It sort of takes up the whole area. Yeah. So good, you came back home and and you felt good about being home. Now, now walk us through, ease us into the association with with WMNF. Did you come here as a volunteer first? Uh, so my first time actually coming through these doors. There was an there was an event back in the day. Uh, me and my brother Tone Capone, uh, shout out to him. Shout we, out. Uh, the, he does Waves of the Bay. We started doing uh, shows to give artists homegrown. They call it local, but I call it homegrown artists a chance to be heard on the different platforms and different stages. We did a show in St. Pete, and we did a show down in Ebor City. There was an award show back then called the As One Awards, and they select me to be the DJ that particular year. So they came in on a Saturday night shutdown with Concept, and they had me to be the DJ that night. And I was like, yo, this is kind of dope. You know, all the DJ equipment, the gadgets. and You got that, everybody's attention? Got everybody's attention. And that was my first time actually coming through these doors of WMNF. But when I was a kid, my step pops across the street, there used to be like an open field. Okay. And I was one of the Kenny kids because the signal didn't, you know, wasn't as strong to go all over the city. So they would park across the street and I would have my Kenny cousins and they would pop their trunks and play the radio and we would listen to Kenny K playing hip hop and stuff like that. Wow. While we were across the street playing, it's about one o'clock in the morning, but you know, we would have pops. Right. Of course, everything's safe. So, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
No, yeah, that's that's deep. That's that, listen. That's I mean, it's in his DNA. Pal. Yeah, 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 it is. It's you know what I'm thinking? Thing. Yeah. yeah. And what year would that be? Approximately, give me a year. Uh, for as far as Kenny kids, yeah, mm-hmm. I was about ten years old. Okay, so that was ninety early nineties. Yeah, early nineties. Okay, yeah. ninety two three. Yeah. So, so you're that's pretty cool. You're connecting to WMNF at that point. You're getting right. there's a thing that's happening now. You you mentioned uh, doing this other DJing work. You actually were doing things before you came to oh, yeah. WMNF. So talk a little bit about that if you would. So I, I was uh, I met a I met a really good friend of mine's name uh, uh, Melvin Duncan, and he was a DJ. Mm-hmm. And growing up in Central Park in West Tampa, you know, have these block parties similar to like they have up in New York in sure. the summers. And I would see, you know, you have people come from all sides of town. But the one person everybody always had love for was the DJ. Right. And I was like, well, Dag, I want to I, I wanna see what that's like. And I listened to all different types of music. I didn't just listen to hip hop. I wasn't in just one pocket. I was different, mm-hmm. different lanes of music. And um, I would say back then, the one, the one group that really opened my eyes up to that was Pink Floyd. Ah, really? Pink Floyd. Yeah, back then they did a tour, which I'm, I'm going to show you my age. It was called the Ice Palace, not Amelie Arena. Mm-hmm. Right. You see what I'm saying? Some right. of us old timers still refer yeah. to yeah, it as yeah. such. And, yeah. And, yeah. So when I say, you know, the Ice Palace, people look crazy. I'm like, oh, you're not from Tampa. Correct. <laughs> right. You, see oh, what you I'm don't saying? know Buffalo right. Avenue. Yeah. I got you. Or I Buffalo. Got you. Buffalo. You yeah, know. I got you. So, um, you know, I, I, I started messing around with DJ equipment and stuff. I'll go with him to his parties and to carry his equipment. And, you know, I started learning on my own. Bought my own equipment and I started doing house parties and then uh, I met up with Tone, Tone Capone that way as well. Right. And uh, he he just kept telling me for like two years, I got this plan, got this plan. I'm like, okay. And then eventually that two years turned into, you know, some actuality, uh, some actual action, I should say. Uh, for people to, you know, get a hold of the traction I was making. Well, uh, let's just let's just let everybody know who we are at this point in time. In case they want to join the conversation, here's who we are. Who are we, Jessica? I think I, I have a good idea. I know where Hi, I'm going. Hi, I'm Copeland Moore from La Segunda Bakery, and you're listening to The Conversation with Mario Nunez and Joe King Carter on WMNF 88.5 Tampa. Thank you, Copeland, for that wonderful introduction. And if you'd like to join the conversation, which is a terrific name for a podcast, you can do that by calling 813-239-9663. If you've got a question for Spaceship or you just want to give him a shout out and tell him how much you appreciate what he's doing here at WMNF. And we're ramping up and getting ready to tell you all about that in just a second. You can also send us a text at 813-433-0885. DJ at WMNF.org if you'd like to send me an email. DJ at WMNF.org. It seems to me that, uh, Spaceship, you you recognized early on the influence that these DJs had at gatherings, at parties. Not only were they the central focus of the attention, if you will, Mm -hmm. but also they controlled the vibe, man. They controlled, you know, like if this party was going to rock, it was going to be on you. Right. And I think you stepped into that because you really appreciated that part of oh, what yeah. it is a DJ does. Oh, yeah. Um, to me, DJing is, um, you know, some people want to be doctors, some people want to be lawyers, and that's fine, but that might Because we not, need them, too. Yeah, we do, but that might not be the gift that God gave someone. And, you know, sometimes when you continue to run away from what's, you know, God given to you, it, it, everything else can become a struggle. So not saying I struggle with everything else, but to me, DJing was one of the most, you know, natural. very comfortable, natural. It's a superpower to me. You know, you can make people laugh, you can make them reminisce, you can make them cry, you can make them, hey, I remember where I was, you know, like, you have big events, like, I remember where I was when that song came out type stuff. Correct. So, and and it's just, you know, getting that kind of feedback from people, you know, sometimes people don't like what you do. They don't like what you play. I mean, you know. Different different strokes for different folks. Exactly. So, I mean, yes, it's it's just, it's been a journey, a great journey. And it's, you know, and it's also a game that you can play into your old and old. Yeah, you can play that game. That's probably the smartest thing about it. Right. That you can do it from, you know, 6 to 60, 9 to 90. Yeah. I, I, you know, I commend you, uh, Spaceship, and I'm going to just lay this at your feet just in case, you know, the whole thing with DJ Spaceship don't work out. Right. You can tack right over to DJ Superpower because I think that works too. Right. Put my pen and, and let paper. Me get that right. ring. Let me ring that bell. Let me write that one down. <laughs> DJ Superpower. Hold on now. <laughs> nah. Well, you know, the that other could thing. That could be your alter ego. That it, could be like, you know, you. that's your Saturday night gig. The other thing about it that I see is that, uh, and this is why these personal narratives 
reveal so much right. is that your interest in music early on and all that stuff, and you're really Kenny talking, King. Kenny Kid, yeah, Kenny you're kid. talking about, but you're talking about uh, an interest in a broad spectrum of music. You know, not everybody does that. Right. Some people listen to one kind of music, and that's their music. Mm-hmm. And when you encounter people, I'm the same way. I listen to everything that that comes. I come in contact with. Right. Uh, I've never been a big fan of Chinese opera, but beyond that, give it a shot. Uh, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty hip to everything that's happening. And in fact, by the way, I'm a huge Outcast fan. But hey, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Nice, Joe. But um, th- what what you're describing, I think, is a creative. It's the creative aspect of being a right. DJ. And creativity, by the way, studies show that creativity isn't so much about intellect or uh, whatever the gift may be. It's about the ability to play. Right. If you can play, right. and nobody is more inspired to play than someone who loves the thing they're playing in. So That's that true. makes a lot of sense. And another thing about DJing that I want to say very quickly is there's a reason their MC became a handle so much. It's right. because you are the master of ceremonies. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That's wonderful. So we, 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 we've, we, we, we've now engaged ourselves in the WMNF orbit, right? Yes. So you're, you're, you're sweeping uh, up the break room. You're uh, changing the paper <laughs> towels in the bathroom. I say this facetiously because you're just now, you know, you're earning your credibility. Earning right. my keeps. Yeah, you're earning your keeps. Exactly. Right. exactly. And you're letting people know that you're a hard worker and you're here to stay. Yes. So, um, as Joe would say, take us through the next few steps along yes. your journey. So, what what happened next was, you know, me and Tone, you know, like I said, we were doing, you know, shows, putting on showcases, one in St. Pete. A lot of promoting at that time. Yeah. It sounds to me like you were, making, you know, equal parts promoter. Yes. And well, I, I, I don't want to take the promoter part and put on me. That would be more so a Tone. Okay. I would say I was more of a supporter in that situation. Okay. He would put it together. We would sit down and talk about, you know, this is what it is. And I would say, yeah, nay on this. Mm-hmm. The one thing I will say is Tone. Tone also helped me to understand what an MC does. He helped me to understand what a promoter does. Like I understood, we helped one another understand each other's world. You know, gotcha. everybody to see a DJ thing. And you grew together. We, yeah, that's my brother, man. Like we've we've had conversation. We've taken a show to Kansas, back where he's from. You know, so can't Dor- Dorothy is not the only thing there. <laughs> me and Tone Capone have been there. Dor- Dorothy and, and Tornadoes. It. Yeah, so we um eventually we started doing the podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. Podcast was called Waves of uh, Waves of Waves of Bay. Ignite the Night. I believe that was the name okay. of the podcast, and then okay. we started doing podcasting there, and we got a, a text message at the end of one of our shows one night saying, hey, would you guys like to come and join the Saturday Night Shutdown? And I was excited. Uh, I was very excited to get that text message, and then Tone got his message. I told him, look, even if you don't go, I'm going, because I've never, you know, done something like this before. And step out. We need to step yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, just like a, a bird. When they step out, they're either going to fly or fall, but either way, they're going to try. And I, I jumped out there, put my wings out, and we came together. Fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, we both came together, and we started doing that. And then eventually, there was a time slot from 10 to midnight that came available, and me and Tone landed our own spot, own home, right there, 10 to midnight every Saturday nights, right here on 88.5. There's the humble beginnings. There now, it is. Now, you're, now you're starting to get the depth and the breadth of the man's experience. Yeah. And at this point... Now, this we all know because we are part of that f- happy family. Yes. The, the programmers are all volunteers. You know, we come in here of our own free will. We, you know, we, we on our dime, so to speak. Yes. But uh, in, these, in those early days, that's that's how you kind of started to wade into the waters. Right. 10 o'clock on Saturday night. What were you doing to sustain yourself in the interim? Were you picking up these shows and doing these shows like you were, or did you have a nine to five? So I, I had a nine to five, mm-hmm. um, you know, like a lot of us creatives do until you get to that. In, until you get you, to that level. Yeah. And when you get you have a nine to five until your five to nine takes care of you. Right. Um, and I, I had a nine to five and I would do that. And then I would still do parties and events and stuff like that. Private and, you know, big, big time events, nightclubs and stuff like that. OK. Um, it, then it got to a point where I had to make a decision either to be at the show that night or to go and do a party. I committed to the show. So most of the time I was at the show and Tony and I did a good job of communicating with one another in case one was out. One was going to be in, you know, we were both going to be there. Somebody was covering. Somebody, we were covered either which way it goes. Right. You remember what studio you might have been in? in I was in the Kenny K. Oh, okay. I would start out in the Kenny K. Tone would be inside in here in Studio 2. And then eventually after I do my opening set, come on inside, come inside the uh, Studio 2 and we make magic from there. We so would you have people. a little group outside that was, that was kind of surrounding you out there at the time that you were doing it out there? Uh, when you say a group, you mean as far as like people outside? People from the, the outside, yeah. People from the outside. Anybody, you know. How would that work out? 
Well, people, they will listen. They will tune in and stuff like that. Okay. Um, different artists and stuff like that. And then just people who I've done parties for that just continue to follow the movement and stuff like that. Um, I would do things like go live on social media, you know, the Instagrams, TikToks. So by now, that's in play. Yes. By now, all of the social media platforms are engaged. Yes. And you guys being the young men, smart, uh, entrepreneurial uh, that you are, you were engaged in all of that. Right. You, you knew that that, that was the, a quick means to getting your... Your, oh, yeah. your message out. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. I mean, you, you sign this to social media, and it's millions of people watching, potentially. Even like now with our voices on this radio, it's potentially millions of people can be listening to us and streaming us. And, you know, we, there's millions just in the, the Tampa Bay area, but then streaming, that's a, that's a whole nother ball game. And, you said, and as, you said, as you said, millions of people listening to me, I, I got a little scared. I got a little nervous. Oh, no. All of a sudden, but not really. No. But, I, but I did, the, the thought did come to mind that if there are millions of people listening right now, yes. this might be a, just a, one more opportunity to say, listen, if any of you guys have got $16 a month and you'd like to yeah. send it to us, we would, we would graciously accept it and then yes. of course you would push us over the top and make us uh, that much closer to our goal. So uh, DJ, you know we we know you, we love you, we see your energy each and every week when we come in here. And oh by the way, full disclosure, if those right. of you that listen to our show, DJ also uh, graciously answers our phones for us oh, uh, yeah. each and every week. So when the phones ring, it's usually DJ uh, spaceship that's that's on the other end of the line. Uh, but you can also listen to him. Uh, another time oh, yeah. slot here and 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 how first of all before we jump to I, and it was sort of a coronation. It was a passing of a, of a very, very uh, significant baton here. Big shoes. Absolutely. Yeah, big, big step up. Big, big, big step up for, for DJ. And he knows this. He knows this because, again, it's in, WMNF is in his DNA. So, And we know he, we're going to have him around for the next 30, 40 years. There so, we go. So, DJ, so DJ <laughs> when, uh, you know, take us, take us a little bit back uh, to the time period when you started doing your show for Saturdays from 10 to midnight. <clears throat> and then how long did you do that? What came next for you? So it's the, the Saturdays, uh, 10 to midnight with me and Tone. I did that for probably about, I want to say about four years. Mm -hmm. Four years that Tone and I did that. And, um, you know, like I said, I would just be, um, I would just be DJing and I would come in and commentate stuff like that. Tone would run the boards. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tackle that, that wheat stone. That was, uh, that, that wasn't me. The smaller one, yeah, but the, the big wheat stone board in studios one or two, that, at that me. time. At that time. At that time. Right. And then uh, one day he uh, he goes out of town and he goes to, he went he went back to Kansas. He went out of town. And when he went out of town, I didn't want to just be in there DJing the whole time. I wanted to, you know, I want to play with the big board just like everybody else does. I want to look cool. And <laughs> he's taking these pictures with the nice little selfies. And you got the boards and the buttons lit up. And I'm like, well, I want the buttons to light up too. So I sat over there and I say, well, listen, if I make a mistake, there's a dump button. I mean, I don't worry about using profanity. Uh, let's go. And I sat down and I started learning more about it. And then I became an employee of the station. I became an employee of the station. And then uh, DT, shout out to DT. DT. He took me, my, my technical knowledge in these studios from step one to like beyond. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I used to watch DT come in these studios and something to be going on or is a, a, a problem. And he when that just, red light comes on, you know, people just jump yeah, through the doors. Yeah, he was, he'd come in like a Jedi Knight and wave his light, knight's nice lightsaber and, and fix it and just walk away. And I'm like, well, Dag, how did he do that? And I wanted to learn. So I would, you know, follow him closely and pay attention and ask a lot of questions. Right. Because I was curious and I wanted to be able to do the same. Right. And then there was an opportunity for morning radio to come up. Um, and when I saw that opportunity for the Monday mornings, I wanted to do it. I said, you know, if I do that, you know. Uh, morning radio was a heavy spot in radio. Um, it, it's tough. <laughs> it's, it's drive two, time. Drive, drive time. time. It's two mm -hmm. two extra hours instead of just the one hour mm -hmm. that I would do with Waves of the Waves of Bay is two hours, but technically I would do one, and me and Tone would split the second one together. Right. And I uh, went for it, and I told Sam, I said, "Hey, listen, you know, I'm a DJ. I love no music. I can. I'm not afraid to talk on the microphone. And if anything goes wrong, technically." Yeah, I don't have to call anybody. I'm already I'm here. I'm fixing myself. Yeah, and I don't have an excuse to be late to work because I'm already yeah. here. So <laughs> right. I did that, and then eventually as time goes on, I met my co-host, uh, Nate Dog, and mm -hmm. he came along, and then eventually Cam, who was doing Fridays for, was it uh, 40, 44 years? Let's talk, let's talk briefly about 
No, not briefly. Let's talk about that. But let me briefly pause because I want to read this one email that came in. It says, it says, we love spaceship. Love is in all caps, by the way. We love spaceship up here in crazy ass Brooksville. Thank you. Thank you. Tina and Dennis following your thoughtful lead to say, quote unquote, have a great day on purpose. I think they've heard that before. Yes. uh, Yes. Smile hard and have a great day on purpose. Here we go. Thank you so much, Tina and Dennis, for listening. Thank you, Tina and Dennis, for that. Right. Yes. And and before we go, one more thing. Billy story. Sure. Uh, What we're, what you're hearing uh, if you're listening to us right now, you're hearing the evolution of a DJ and how that person comes to be. And it's also giving yes. you an insight into the technology involved because when he's talking about the big board, right now I'm sitting here and the amazing Jessica is sitting at the big board. Jessica yes. Green. Shout out to Jessica and Green. Yes, uh, that's right. Uh, Jessica Green. Jessica G, the OG. <laughs> but at any go. rate... Um, you know, that's a lot. There's a lot yes. of technology here, and there's a lot of skill that has to be uh, built. It doesn't come to you, obviously, automatically. And so people listening out there, uh, I, I hope you understand that those people that come here and volunteer to do this, uh, I'm more or less new to the game when you think of someone like Cam Dilly, right. these people that have been here for 30 and 40 years and beyond. It's amazing to me when I think about that. Yes. And um, th- 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 what I'm seeing is this entire um, uh, megaplex of activity that's happening here that people don't really see, uh, probably normally grab. The other thing I want to say real quick, too, is that, yes, Cam came from another generation. He's about my age. And what is so cool about WMNF is this ongoing diversity in which now you have someone like Spaceship who comes here. Who could be Cam's son. And he can. And the, age right. the age is right. It could be anybody. It could be anybody that's uh, that's uh, uh, DJing a show currently, whether it's public affairs or music. Uh, you are bringing to this station your perspective and your energy and your culture, Love. and that's what and that's what makes MNF so incredibly valuable in our community. One of the things yes. that makes it so. Go yeah. ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, so you know, then eventually, uh, you know, Cam. As a matter of fact, I have to give uh, some love to to Randy. I call her Randy the Great. She's uh, she was very instrumental in helping me, uh, help shaping me to. She challenged me. Mm-hmm. Now uh, she came in one morning and she she said something to me. Nothing bad, but she said something to me that challenged me. And when I say it challenged me as far as my music selection, it challenged me as far as the, the things I talk about. It challenged me from the ums and the oohs and filling up the dead airs and being prepared and things like that. So I won't say I won't share exactly the lesson she gave me, but I will say the knowledge that I learned from it is is instrumental. And Cam, that's you know those are big shoes to fill. Mm-hmm. Cam was one of the first people on air once I took the the morning show on Monday mornings that reached out like, hey. Uh, you know, I, we already were familiar with one another. He was like, if you need anything, let me know, et cetera, Very generous, et Cam, always yeah. very generous. And initially, I, I kind of, you know, I didn't, not to sound arrogant or anything, but I didn't reach out, and he reached out again. But this time he reached out, it wasn't through an email. He was in person like, knock, knock, I'm at your door. Right. Hey, you need anything? And he started sharing things with me, giving me feedback and things like that, along with other people. As far as on-air talent, mm-hmm. he was, he was the, the first one to actually do that. And I was like, you know what? Okay, he. I always thought he was cool, but he's real, real, no, real cool. Even to this day, <laughs> even to this and day, and he's real. Yeah, he's and still, he's real. He still he's reaches real out cool. now, so he's yeah. now one. And he's he's like like Star Wars. He's one in the force for me. So yes. if I mm-hmm. if I do mm-hmm. anything or go which Obi-Wan. direction, yeah, he's the Obi Wan. So he's, he's Obi Wan. Yeah. He definitely uh, still reaches out to me and shares. We share music and things like that in conversation. Right. So hopefully we'll get to send this link to him so he can hear this show. Yeah. from his uh, well, from his no new doubt home in Chicago. Dilly. Is one of the voices that I, for many years, associated with WMNF, and founding yeah. father, in a big way, a founding father. That's correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So to take that position, to take that spot, you know, Cam spot, that was that was huge and, and exciting. He must have been really excited. I mean, come How on. How was that first show, man? Were you nervous? Did you get up at four in the morning just to do that show? So <laughs> or three in the morning because you probably get up at four anyways. I mean, tell everybody what time your show is and when it is. So my show is every Friday mornings from six a.m. to nine a.m. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as getting up, the first show was it was nerve wracking because at the same time I, I want to be true to myself. At the same time, I want to make sure that you know because it's a whole new audience. 
So I want to make sure that, you know, I'm doing them justice at the same time, let, allowing them to see who I am and experience Spaceship and Nate Dog. 100%. Right? And, um, you know, just just continue to do the same thing. And it's the rule of 10. You know, some are going to be four, some not, and some not going to, you know, uh, be affected or care about it either way it goes. I try my best to make sure that, you know, I'm listening to everybody. But once again, a request is, is, is a suggestion, not a demand. That's something that I've learned from a great person as well. Ah, very good. Yeah. Yes. Say yeah. that again for us, DJ. A request is a suggestion, not a demand. Right. So just because somebody requests something doesn't mean there... It has to happen. It has right. to happen. So it's it's a suggestion. It's like, take this a, under advisement. You know, that's the kind of... That, that kind part of, right there. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, good. How are you enjoying? I mean, because it's safe to say now that you're in that seat and you've been in the seat for a couple of months now. Right. Um you you feeling it you feeling it better? I mean, it, on Friday mornings it's like okay, yeah. it's my car. I'm driving it now. Let's go. So I still can't be late on Friday mornings. No. I have no reason no. to be late because I'm already here. <laughs> um, I would say it's it's fun. You know, it, it has a different feel than you know Mondays. Mondays is you're coming out of the weekend. Fridays you're going into, into the weekend. It. So it's TGIF the party, getting everything going that way as well. And can I mention to you that yes. that Wednesday mm -hmm. is the fulcrum between both of those, right? You're right. So Monday you might have the blues a little bit. Friday, you're jazzed up because you know what's coming Saturday and Sunday. Right. But Wednesday, you're equal distant from both. Right. So I'm just I'm just a little gratuitous plug for the conversation on Wednesdays at noon. If you if right. you feel like you need a little pick me up in the middle of the week, this is the place to be. Right. Because right. you get to hear about life stories like like DJ Spaceship, Greg right. Bauer. So I'm just saying, stay with us. We're, we're growing. We're going to get better and better. DJ, uh, that Friday morning, that Friday lineup. Right. And I was a part it's, of it it's for a, a hot one. minute. I was a part yeah. of it for a hot minute. You know, I was on Fridays at 10 o'clock in the morning down and dirty. Right. But uh, it it starts off with you at 6 a.m. and it goes all the way to the Soul Kitchen. Not the Soul Kitchen. What comes right after the Soul Kitchen? I want to say it's uh, Friday evenings. I, I can't think off the top of my head. I'm actually, I'm actually have to dig a little further before me. Wait, actually, I mean, that whole that, that whole Friday lineup is amazing. Yeah, I was, it actually doesn't start with me. It kicks off with Renna. Like she, what she, Renna? She's doing three to three to six. Three or? to six. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she, and she she's amazing. Shout yeah. out to Renna. Yeah, yeah, Renna does her yeah. thing, man. Like, yeah. I, can we talk about that for a brief moment? Sure. I mean, the, the hours evaporating on us. Can we talk about what it must take? Now, listen, we're talking about people that are doing. Radio at midday. Right. I mean, this is come on now. You sleep until nine, whatever. You know, right. you you if you're on a six, you better get up at three or three thirty. Yeah, that's true. But if you're if you're on at three a.m., what does that what does that constitute? What is that? What takes? I know, mean, three a.m. You better you better make sure you have proper rest. I mean, I've learned by hydrate. Yeah, hydrate, eat well. I've learned by a lot of the. I pay attention to a lot of people that are great in what they do. So the the, the Michael Jacksons, the the LeBron Jameses, the Kobe Bryant's. You know, anybody. It doesn't have to be someone in radio. But I look at seeing what they do in preparation. You, you, you have to make sure you're getting proper rest. Make sure you're doing your research. Nutrition. Nutrition. And you want to make sure that you're being diverse in everything. So that, you know, where, no matter Balance. where the Yeah. Wherever the conversation goes, you're able to contribute to it and not sound like you just read it out of a book, out of the library or something like that. That's right. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been a journey. I've been doing morning radio now. I want to say it's been going on three years. Mm -hmm. It's going on three years now. So mm -hmm. the getting up early in the mornings, my body's used to it. Sometimes. And you're and you're young too. I mean, you know, we. I appreciate you're that. right there in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Wait, but wait, wait. No, don't. You're not gonna give me a backhanded compliment. <laughs> I'm young, so we're yes, you are. Just, well, especially <laughs> when you consider me, me and Joe. So let's leave it right there. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, leave yeah, it right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I digress. I digress. Yeah. I went too far, as I usually do. <laughs> yeah, but you know what's nice about your Friday morning slot is that you are supplying this energy, this drive time energy. Right. People are getting up, waking up. Um, it's a, it's, it, it must be a very different experience than anything that's happening late at night. Um, and it, it's a, it's really nice because I like getting up Friday mornings with right. you, by the way. And hey, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's nice. And you've got that, you just, the music selection is always top, top and it's just a uh, good stuff. Yeah. I, li I like to give people that curveball. you know, you never know what's going to be played, what's coming. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing, it's nothing more than when you have someone email, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys get to your shows, get it from your shows when you have that topic and you take someone somewhere mentally for me, when I take someone somewhere, you know, musically, it's like, dang, it makes them reminisce. Or mm -hmm. I never heard this. Like, for example, you have October London, who sounds like Marvin Gaye. Mm -hmm. And for the longest, I had a listener that would listen, and they was like, Thinking oh, it was Marvin. They thought it was Marvin. I was sure. like, and then when I announced, oh, that's October, they were like, wait a minute, signed to Death Row, Death Row, wait, Marvin 
death row. That just some of that doesn't sound generationally right. different. Yeah, yeah. Right, so, right. But it's good times, man. I, I love to being able to get those kind of reactions and responses from people. Yeah, you're 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 very. It's very obvious to me that you're very much in touch with wanting to affect the listener in a positive yeah. way, yeah. and that's a connection you're making. Right. And that's that's something that is lost in radio. That's that doesn't exist in corporate radio. So, I agree. folks, I don't care if you're <clears throat> you have that uh, algorithm that's uh, setting up all your music for you on uh, w- and one of those commercial stations. That connection that you're supplying is real, and people feel it. Well, it's tough because it's like when it comes to doing what we do here uh, during the morning drive, and then you know the the traffic jam. We, we 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 don't have any record labels calling us saying, "Hey, play these songs." That they're paying us to do. No, we don't have that. Right. I have to not just me, but me and all all of the us, programmers. We have to sit down and create. We have to give you guys this show, so we have to sit down and think about these songs, and then what I played the previous week and the week before and the week before. Right. So so that we're not playing the same thing again over and over and over. And I get it. You know, we, we, we want to hear the Billy Jeans and we want to hear the, the top hits. But however, there are those B-sides, the undercuts that those artists have that take you there and that jam just as hard. So it, it's it's a process. And then, you know, you're talking points and know what you're going to talk about. And then, hey, you can get a curveball. Sure. Some breaking news can happen. Sure. You know, you might have a guest come in and you have to do your research on the guest. So it's it's a journey. I mean, it's. It's well, a very thoughtful enterprise. It's yes. a very thoughtful enterprise. And my yes. music education, my my personal music education has come from do, through WMNF. Yeah. There are countless, countless, countless bands that and groups and, and, and performers I never would have known. Christopher James, Liquid Pennies. It, it, it goes on and on and on. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I'm not a young guy, but I'm, I'm fairly hip right. in knowing something about music only because of WMNF. Right. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's a good times, and I'm, I'm even me being an employee here. Like I hear songs that other programmers are playing. Like, oh, I like that, right? And then I'll go down a rabbit hole looking at the 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 different the catalog of those particular artists. And we would be remiss because this is a as as the show comes to a close, and I've got a special uh, close of the show that I want to do for everybody here. And I'm going to take a personal risk, great Uh-oh. personal risk. Uh-oh. I'm going to honor <clears throat> in just a few minutes. I'm going to honor uh, James Earl Jones, who also we lost this week. Yes. Uh, at, at the age of 93, um, with a soliloquy from a field of dreams. Uh, but, but uh, we would be remiss if we didn't mention you're going to be honored this Friday night. Can you talk a little bit about that spaceship? Cause so yes. we want to get everybody to come on out. Yeah. So everybody come out, you get a chance to actually see the, the five foot eight great. <laughs> <laughs> that's, right, that's right. That's right. I will be at the Commodore. With, five eight uh, is great. Yeah. I will be at the Commodore with Kelly and, uh, they're gonna, it's, it's the salute and happy days. Absolutely. And uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting. I've, I've never done it. It's, uh, I tried to get a little information to see what I'm facing. I'm confident that it's going to be a good time, like JJ and them, and we're just going to. Hey, gonna, folks, come on out to the yeah. Commodore Friday night, Nebraska and Seventh Avenue. Nebraska correct? and Seventh yes. Avenue. I, I cannot say <clears throat> too much, too many good things about what this club is about. Uh, what this uh, artistic group is about. It's an experience that's unique. It's not like any other commercial uh, uh, comedy uh, shop in the country. And. Uh, DJ is going to be there. Spaceship is going to be there. I'm going to be there. Yep. Mario is going to be there, and we're going to have some fun. He's going to be the honored guest. <clears throat> so without further ado, because we're coming close to the end of this, let me just say that one of the greatest movies, especially the greatest baseball movie of all time, in my humble opinion, is Field of Dreams. We lost uh, the great James Earl Jones this week. <clears throat> this is uh, With Love in My Heart uh, for James Earl Jones. Ray, people will come, Ray. They'll come to Iowa for reasons they can't even fathom. They'll turn up your driveway, not knowing for sure what they're doing. They'll arrive at your door, as innocent as children longing for the past. Of course we won't mind if you look around, you'll say. It's only $20 per person. They'll pass over the money without even thinking about it, for it's money that they have and peace they lack. And they'll walk out into the bleachers and sit in shirt sleeves on a perfect afternoon. They'll have reserved seats somewhere along one of the baselines where they sat when they were children and cheered their heroes and they'll watch the game. And it'll be as if they've been dipped in themselves in magic waters, the memories so thick they'll have to brush them away from their faces. People will come, Ray. The one constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. America has rolled like an army of steamrollers. It's been erased like a blackboard, rebuilt and erased again. 
but baseball has marked the time. This field, this game, this part of our past, Ray, it reminds us all that was once good and could be again. Oh, people will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. All right. Bravo. Listen, hey. Woo! And it's funny that you, listen, I'm a huge James Earl Jones fan, by the way, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, from the Star Wars voice of Vader, um, Sandlot, he played in the Sandlot. Oh, he was, yes. Uh, You know, I'm King Joffy Joffart, rule of Zamunda. That's right. So, you know, I'm a huge, huge James Earl Jones fan. This is CNN. Don't forget, he was the first voice that said, this is CNN. We're just about out of time. We got to get out of here in just a minute or so. DJ... Love in our hearts, brother. We just, you Anytime. know, come on now. Listen, this is great. This has been great, and and for the family affair, I think this has been a wonderful show. Yes. And let me just say, if you uh, stay tuned, please, folks, remain in your seats because Jim Bannon's next door, cranking it up. He's, he's getting ready. He's getting ready to be the uh, the master of music, uh, the uh, Swami of sound. He's uh, he's at the board. So listen up, folks. You're gonna have a good time. And DJ, come back and see us soon. Well, we'll see you next week because you'll be answering our phones. I'll be around like the letter O. I love it. We'll see you on Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for watching. Thanks for all your contributions and the love you send us each and every week. I'm Mario Nunez. This is Joe King Carter. You're listening to WMNF Tampa.